almost breakfast time, right? Best meal of the day, great thing to have. I'm gonna be doing some work on frittatas today. We're gonna to be showing an older video of some frittatas that Rinda's made, really trying to emphasize how important it is and how to do the kinds of foods that just really get you going. I mean, you look forward, you're jumping out of bed, let's go have breakfast, that's what we're all about. Now, what we wanna also let you know is, despite the fact that we're here without our homestead, we brought true freezers full of food with us, things that we had been able to gather, things that we had produced ourselves. So we've got the food and we're able to make it, and we're gonna be showing you a little bit of what we've done in the past as well. And I am gonna take it and show you how quickly I'm going to make it to put into the frittata. I've got that with spinach and now I'm going to do kale. Nothing has to be, it doesn't have to take long. You just want to show that you, you want to take this real incredibly great food and cook it. And it's just begging to be cooked. So there's kale. Whoops! I'm going to take some onion. You don't want to take a lot of the outside of the onion off because the nutrients are right underneath. That actually is more than I'm going to want, so I'm going to only do half of that right now. And then this is a leek. Leeks are notorious for holding dirt. So you just want to make sure that they're clean. And then I'm going to put a celery in, part of the celery. Now whatever you have on hand, I love it when I have a lot of squash, because I'll do squash. Oops, one more thing. My bell pepper. But really, whatever vegetable you have can go into this. Cabbage just as amazing. Okay, we're going to bring it over. Okay. Whoops, missed my fan watching the camera. I'm going to add a little bit of sea salt to it. And this is where you can go with whatever you love, whatever flavoring. If you want it to be Indian, you put in more Indian spices. If you want to be Oriental, you put in Oriental spices. Um, whatever you want. And you're just going to cook this down a little bit. Going to add some, this is just whole yogurt. Meat, whole milk, organic oat yogurt. Going to get it, make this a stirring experience here. And voila, we are ready you know, with the eggs. a little bit of milk to it. Oh, we want milk. The chef says milk. This is also whole milk. We don't use any low-fat products at all. Low-fat products have sugar added. And this is whole and raw. And once again, voila, we are mixed and ready to go. Here we are, ready to add the eggs into the prepared veggies. Add shredded cheese to the top. Now there are two ways to do it at this point. You can put it on low and put a lid on it, which is what I do when I'm in a really big hurry. But when I'm not in a big hurry, then I take it and I put it in my oven, which is what we're gonna do. All right, look at how beautiful, woohoo! That took about 10 minutes to do that. And I may have let it cook just a little bit too long because I think it was in there 11 minutes. 
So the other day, I was asked to make brown rice for something at church, and several people were asked, and they didn't need mine. I'm like, no problem, because brown rice stores really well in the freezer. Now, let me start out by saying I'm going to get rid of my plastic and move to glass and stainless steel. When I need something, it's there. Having a, a freezer full of staples is one of the solutions for making real food work. So if you have containers of beans and rice and quinoa and chicken and all of these different things, then you can just go pull them out and it really makes a great difference. So I'm going to put all of this chicken and this rice in my refrigerator, in my freezer really quick. And it's so amazing what you can do when you have these things on hand. You can just make all kinds of wonderful things really quickly. And it's a great way to do it. So now I'd like to show you what's in my freezer and how I use my freezer. So on the top I have apples and blackberries that we picked from our own garden. Or actually, blackberries are a weed here and I didn't believe that. And I said I would never cut down a blackberry bush, but I've cut down some blackberry bushes. Strawberries, which will be coming on season really soon. So this is April. I need to get these strawberries used. And I have chicken broth. I have, what is this? Broccoli, spinach, goat milk. These are all of the chickens that we had before that we processed. And down below, I have strawberry sauce, apples, wonderful soup. I came out here the other day and found that I had five quarts of chicken soup. Ah! That's like a gold mine, so I had one and we have four others down here. And then I have more chickens at the bottom, and now I have rice and shredded chicken that's all ready to eat. On the door, I have blueberries, chicken livers, and peaches. So let me tell you why this is so important. You can go to the grocery store, and you can go to the freezer section and buy their prepackaged um containers that have meals in them. You do not know what's in them, or you do. You can read on the package, and I mean the list is sometimes this long of the ingredients, and all of the preservatives and the additives and the things that are in there. I know what is inside of everything in this freezer, so I take them and I make them into my meals. And the ideal thing is to have your meals pre-made, like my soup. Already done, pull it out, I know what's in it. It's terrific. So that's the goal. Use your freezer, grow your own food, buy your food locally, and be able to eat real food. Because when we eat real food, then we eliminate the processed food because there's no room for it left in our diet.